All right, so we know what this channel is about for the most part, right? Like doing OBS stuff, doing dual PC streaming setup stuff. And this video is gonna be a little bit more fun because first of all, I'm not scripting it. Uh, this is me completely off the cuff. So if I'm a little more rambly this one, bear with me. I'm really trying to make sure that I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zones. And when I script every single video, I often find that I get comfortable in, in like this almost creative rut where I feel like every video is the same. A company by the name of TE Smart reached out to me and sent me a KVM switch. Now what a KVM switch does is basically it takes the video signal of two computers and then makes it so both computers can share the same monitor setup. And my first thought was, okay, if a streamer wants to use a simpler dual PC streaming setup with only two monitors, but they wanna be able to have multiple windows open, they would need a KVM switch like this. And the cool thing about this one is that it actually goes up to 4K60. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to unbox it real quick. And then we're also going to set it up real time and test it to see how it runs, can it support high frame rates, even though it says 4K60, not all HDMI ports of 4K60 can actually do like 1440p 144 or even 1080p 240. So there's a lot of cool things that we can check out with this. All right, so when you're unboxing this, the first thing that you're gonna see right when you open the box is you're just gonna see the instruction guide manual and you can just set that aside. Then you're going to actually see the KVM switch right there. There's not a whole lot going on in here, which is pretty nice. You can take that out and then it's just covered in a nice foam sheath and you can see on the front here, that you've got all of the lights that I just mentioned before. And then on the back, you can see the IO. And then underneath that, you can also see that you get four HDMI 4K capable cables, and you also get the power supply cable as well as the USB cables for both computers. And you can also see that it comes with a little remote that will actually allow you to change the displays and what computer you wanna use. So something I'm gonna have to consider when I actually start hooking this up, is that it actually introduces another step into the dual PC streaming process. Now I'm assuming that on the back of this, because it's input A, input B, input A and B again on the second PC, they're gonna mirror what comes out on like display one and two here. So input A here and input A here will also be display one here. So I think how I'm going to circumvent that is on display one for PC one, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to plug the gaming PC into the capture card first. That way there's no other signal that can be sent to the capture card. It's only ever gonna see the gaming PC. And then that HDMI out of the Elgato will go into the in one of here, and then we'll go into the display one of the gaming monitor, which is this monitor right here. And this will also let us know right away whether or not this is going to be able to support 1440p 144, or if it's just gonna cap out at 60 Hertz across every resolution. And as a quick side note, all three of those monitors in the back are running on DisplayPort currently. And then this one is running on HDMI 2.0 because if you watched my last video, you know I talked about doing the HDMI pass-through version for the dual PC streaming setup. What I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be disconnecting both of these monitors here. That way we can actually get only a two monitor input so it'll work the most fluent with this. All right, so as you can see, this is a little chaotic, right? This is, this is, this is insane, right? We got two HDMI ins, another two HDMI ins. Uh, PC1 is the gaming PC here. PC2 is the streaming PC here. And then we have these two HDMI outs, which this is the gaming monitor. And I know that because it has the cable that came from the Elgato capture card. This is also HDMI 2.0. And this is the secondary monitor that you can see the audio that I'm routing on it. And I also have my keyboard plugged in right here, my Hades keyboard. And I also have my mouse plugged in right here is a wireless mouse. There is a little power switch right here next to my thumb, as you can see. Now I'm not gonna hit that. I am gonna go quickly unplug all of the monitors. I'm not gonna take them out of the monitor. I'm actually just going to unplug the two display port, excuse me, the three display port cables out of the streaming PC. And we're just gonna see what happens when I turn it on. All right, so as you can see, all of the monitors are turned off. I hope I'm in frame. I had to start recording this one after I turned everything off. So I don't know what's going on, but here we go. We are going to turn on the switch, I don't know if I can see that. And it's on. All the lights are blinking. Um, 
And from what I understand, you don't need, all right, cool. So now we see one monitor, we see two monitors, that's good. We are seeing one of each computer though, which is a little strange. All right, so it looks like I did not actually set this up incorrectly. It just didn't detect it for the first time because when I actually power cycled the button to change from PC to PC, it recognized the second monitor on the streaming rig right away. So I guess it just wasn't seeing the signal from it first, which is awesome because that means I routed it right the first time. All right, so now the big question is, does this as a 4K60 KVM switch support 144 hertz? As you can see, we've got the planet background right now on the monitors, which means we're looking at the streaming PC. If we check on the VG27AQ, which is my ASUS Tough monitor right here, you can see 1440p and it does actually let us go to 144 hertz, which is awesome, considering that now if I wanna play at a higher resolution with a higher refresh rate, it does work. That's actually awesome. So we can confirm that this HDMI 4K60 does actually allow for high refresh rates. That's super dope. So if you ever wanna run a dual monitor, dual PC streaming setup where you can jump back and forth between systems, one mouse and one keyboard, you can do it. So the only other question that I have for the KVM switch now is does it have input latency on the gaming PC when you're playing first person shooters? Now, before I test this, I should probably preface with the fact that I don't have super, super high end tools yet, like Linus Tech Tips or any of those dudes. So I don't have like the device that can read the light on the screen and tell you how much input latency you're getting from playing. So this is pretty much just going to have to come from word of mouth from me saying, okay, this feels the exact same or I can feel latency. Let's check it out. So we're in OBS, ignore all the stuff you're seeing on screen. This is what I see when I'm shooting. So the first thing that I noticed right when I got on um, was that the capture card looks really weird. Check this out. When we go into the gaming PC, needless to say, the capture card's being a little wonky. So normally one of the ways that I fix the capture card issue is by triggering the 4K capture utility. It usually reboots the signal that's coming into it. Hopefully this fixes it because I actually haven't set anything up yet on the other one. So it's thinking it's 4K60 right now, which is fine. I haven't actually configured anything on the gaming PC. So cool, now it's seeing it as 4K60. So we're gonna hop over onto that screen now and we're gonna see what that looks like. I am gonna go into the game scene. Hopefully that triggered it over on the streaming PC. And now what I can do is you can see that it's, it's trying to be, it's trying to do something weird here. It's thinking that the SC710 is my monitor now. We want 2560 by 1440. So I think what's happening here is the internal EDID of the capture card is trying to, oh, no, it's not. It, it, it is trying to play it 4K, even though it's set to 1440p. That's very interesting. Now you can mess with the internal EDID and that sometimes will actually set it to the correct one. But for now, we're gonna have to actually see if we can get it to, oh, it does, it reads 1440p 144. It blinked, please, okay, good. This is good. So now it sees 1440p 144, which is wonderful. And we are playing, it, it is exactly 1440p 144. And just from dragging this around, there's no, there's no input latency. This right away, this is awesome. Do you want, this is awesome because if you want a super minimalist setup, right? If you want like I, mini ITX form factors, you want small computers, but you wanna do dual PC streaming setup and you wanna use one mouse and key, one audio interface, you could use this for that. That is the final conclusion here. I am gonna boot up Apex, but this does officially support 1440p 144, which means it would also support 1080p 240. So if you wanna do a dual PC streaming setup with this TE Smart dual monitor KVM, it's possible. And it makes me kind of wanna downsize my streaming setup because the whole reason I have all four monitors is because I like having everything on my screen, but if I can just seamlessly swap between the two, there's not even a point anymore. Now I might just be able to set this up, downsize my desk size, and just be able to have a nice, comfortable, small streaming setup, and then move up to two 1440p monitors and then just be doing everything on both rigs at 1440p. So let's hop into a game at King's Canyon real fast now that I've got everything working. Let me swap over to OBS really fast. Okay, OBS is still recording, good. It's still seeing everything. Sound's still working, which is awesome. And it's, it's a pretty fast swap, honestly. Between the two, like I'm back into the game in under two seconds. That's awesome. Because I was actually concerned. I'm like, if you want to swap between systems, are you going to be able to do that in time? So now on the... On the second monitor, you could have chat open or you could have like your alerts and chat or you could have Spotify open or something like that. Yeah, there's no input latency at all on this. 
That's actually insane. Let's shift our orbits that way. So yeah, there is there is no input latency at all in this game. It feels perfectly fluid. Like you can see me moving with it. Don't mind if I do. Perfectly fine. So here are my thoughts. It is a fantastic device. Out of the gate, I was a little skeptical because a lot of HDMI ports will say 4K60, but then they'll also cap any other resolution at a lower refresh rate, even though they are capable of going higher. And I was really pleasantly surprised to see that TE Smart's KVC switch could actually do 1440p 144. As far as a dual PC streaming setup goes, this is definitely a viable option. It's not a capture card. Let me make that abundantly clear. It will not replace the Elgato capture card. It is solely for people who want to have a nice, simple, small dual monitor setup that they don't want to have to worry about OBS and stuff like that on two monitors on the streaming rig and then they can have everything else running on the same two monitors when you hit the button. The seamless button hit, which takes about two seconds to swap over, I couldn't be any happier with it. The only thing that I did note is that it comes with four of the six HDMI cables so that if the two HDMI cables that you're providing for your setup, or in my case, the three HDMI cables that I'm providing, you got to make sure that they're all HDMI 2.0 or higher. That way they can support the high refresh rates. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I also really like that it does support uncompressed 4x4x4 pass-through, which is dope because if you're using this in a professional environment where you're editing photos or you're editing videos and you're trying to make sure your color space is perfectly accurate, this can support that as well. All in all, this is a very well-rounded device. The lagless pass-through for the mouse and keyboard was dope. It was real-time. 144 hertz felt perfectly smooth, just as it does with my setup the way it normally is. And honestly, it's it would be a great addition. It's making me genuinely consider whether or not I wanna go down to a smaller dual PC streaming setup and then just be able to use the KVM switch and swap out when I need to, because then that also improves my editing workflow. When I don't need to use my gaming PC, I could just hit the button, swap over to my streaming PC. And now I have two monitors side by side, because if you look at the monitors behind me, when I'm editing, the center monitor I can't use for editing. That's kind of a bummer. So I usually just have to use the one monitor right here. This is the only one I ever use because it's really jarring to have Premiere up on this monitor or over on this monitor and then also have like the timeline or anything else over here. It's really jarring. So having two monitors side by side to have a bigger editing space for Premiere would be fantastic. Anyway, if you liked the video, tell me what you thought of this format. It was definitely more experimental for me, but I'm actually pretty happy with the way it turned out. I really like trying to break out of my comfort zone. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video or don't, whatever. Feel free to subscribe. Also, feel free to check me out over on Twitch. I'm going through Elden Ring right now, and I'm also going through Resident Evil 4 VR, which is dope. One of my favorite games of all time. If you want to support the channel and see more content, feel free to hit subscribe. And then, uh, I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching as always, and I'll see you then. Peace.